We're three men on a bench. We talk about Spanish. And today we're talking about the members of your family. Like, how do you say family? You know how to say family. You know, just, I was just trying to help you out. And like, family is like familia. But that's not one of the words. I didn't make that one of the words. You think I should go? Man? No, we're good, man. It's like familia. Family. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so you got like madre and padre. And that's like, you know, mother and father. I don't think you knew that. I think you could have figured that one out. I'll give you that much credit. Ah, but like what about like hija and hijo? This is like this is like daughter and son. Yeah, and I think it's it's weird how like in English like we'll make up completely different words for like daughter and son or niece and nephew or whatever. And in Spanish like you know they got the whole ending thing, so they'll just say, you know change the ending on it. Uh, you know, I guess we do that with words like, you know, actress and actor, but, uh, you know, they certainly, they've got it down to a science, really, you know, you got the word hijo for son, you know, just change it to hija, and that's, that's a daughter, what else would it be, you know, it's an hija, must really affect the way you think about stuff, yeah, I can only imagine, okay, and then you got like hermana and hermano, and, and this is like sister and brother, and uh, notice that the H's are silent. And uh, I don't know. Like, you know, they both have her man inside them. So, like, maybe you could think about, like, you know, her man is her brother. And her man is her sister. I don't know. Good luck with that one. Like, hermano. That's brother. And if, like, you know, like, you know, we're, we, have, we share this close bond. Like, you know, we're brothers. We're brothers in arms. You could use it, like, in that sense, too. You know, just like in English. Okay, uh, abuelo and abuela. Um, in English, you know, again, we made a weird decision, you know, that basically grand means skipping a generation. So, like, you know, your grandmother is the mother of one of your parents, you know, grandfather. And in um, Spanish, it's 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 a Latin word, you know, av, avus, av, avus, uh, became like abuelo and abuela. And I don't know really how that helps you because... You know, we don't really talk about Alvus very much anymore. Um, but, you know, so they have this funny word for grandfather, and, you know, basically it's because they stuck to the Latin, and we just made this weird decision about, you know, making up a new definition of the word grand. So, there you go. Just different solutions to the same problem. Um, for some reason, it helped me to think about, you know, Abe, Abraham Lincoln, even though as I look at it now, I mean, the letters A, B, E don't actually appear in that order in either word. Um, but, you know, Grandpa Abe. I think the Grandpa in the Simpsons is Abe, isn't he? I don't know. I haven't watched that in a while. They're like Family Guy. And Family Guy is pretty cool. Okay. And then you got, like, Nieta and Nieto. And that's like, you know, your granddaughter and your grandson. Yep. Um, I looked this up, and apparently it's related to our word niece, which is not going to help anyone at all, because, you know, how are you going to remember that it means granddaughter by thinking about how it's related to our word for niece? And it doesn't mean niece, y'all. It just doesn't. Um, so I think about, like, you know, like in Russian, like, you know, to say no, you say nyet. Um, so you just say to somebody, like, you know, do you have any granddaughters or grandchildren? And they'll say, yet. That helped me. Maybe it'll help you. Yet. Okay. Another one. It's like Tia and Tio. And, uh, like, it's, it's a, like an aunt and an uncle. And, uh, I think that, like, the, the, the person in, uh, the Pirates movies, that Tia Dama... I think that her name was like Aunt Lady. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. But like if her name was Tia Dama, that means like Aunt Lady. So there you go. Or like some people say like aunt and then they look at you like all crazy when you say aunt. Like they have no idea what you're talking about. And like clearly I'm talking about a person, not an insect. And I think you can figure out that my aunt is the same as your aunt, instead of like mocking me. Aunt. That's just, you know, 
I guess. I mean, like, it should rhyme with taunt, really. So, you know what? They're right. It's aunt. I'm saying aunt from now on. Tia Dama. That's like aunt lady. Okay. And then you got, like, sobrina and sobrino. Uh, that's your niece and your nephew. Uh, again, using the same word with different endings for the uh, the female and the male version. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just read The Magician's Nephew, um, you know, as an early learner. And that's like, you know, El Sobrino del Mago. And I guess that kind of helped me. You could think about like, you know, Sobrina. Uh, I know it's Sabrina, but like Sobrina the Teenage Witch. That might help you too. Or like, you know, my nephew gave me some sobering news little sentences like that you know because like sobrino it kind of looks like sober I can see how it looks like sober I'll buy that but like everybody knows amigo yeah but like you know did you know that it comes from the Latin you know amicos and it's related to our word amicable and the phrase amicos curiae which means like you know friend of the court which is like a briefing that you can file in the US court system yes I know all of those things okay I was just asking whether you know those things now we know that you did oh, but yeah that's like a friend and it's a good word to have like you know when talking about family members because you could say oh and that guy right there he's not a family member he's just a friend uh, but if he is a family member then you say that he's a pariente uh, notice that this does not mean parent, and so you get sentences in uh, Spanish that kind of look like, you know, like you're saying, you know, uh, él no es mi padre, es mi pariente. You're saying, like, you know, he's not my father, he's my relative. But if you're just reading it quickly in English, you might think that it says, like, you know, you know, as an English speaker, you know, it's saying, like, he's not my father, he's just my parent. That would be crazy, right? I mean, that's like a paradox. I thought, like, a a black fly in your Chardonnay was a paradox. No. No, it isn't. Okay. I like Novia. This is like, wasn't that a show with Carl Sagan? No. No, it wasn't a show with Carl Sagan. Oh, okay. I'm just. Anyway, I like Novia. It means like a lot of different things in English. You know, it covers a lot of territory. You know, from like a girlfriend. Which is easy to remember because, like, you know, it looks like nuevo, uh, and that means new. And it's like, you know, she's the new girl. She's the nueva. She's the novia. But, like, it can also mean, like, a girlfriend that you're engaged to marry, which, for some reason, in English, we had to borrow the French word. Like, we never even thought to have a name for that until, like, we met French people. Like, uh, fiancé. And then we got, like, bride. And all of those are novia. So can you guess what novio is? No? Yes, you can. You're toying with me. Uh, this is like a boyfriend, or a fiancé, or a groom. That's like a person who's marrying a bride. Sometimes we say bridegroom. Okay. And these are uh, two words for uh, the guy that got married. You got like esposo and marido. And they're both masculine, of course. And they're not too hard to remember. Because, like, you know, esposo looks like spouse, and marido looks like married. And that's what a husband is, right? He's like a married spouse. Okay. And we only have a couple words left, but, you know, we'll cut it off here, and we'll make a part two. So, like, join us in a few minutes for part two. Bye.